Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm with Crow, and I'm with Shrek. What's up? Shrek you've never seen. I've known on video. Shrek's an old friend of mine for a long time. But um, we've been having really, oh, since 10 o'clock or 9.30, I've been talking to Austin. He might come back out. He had a lot of questions, and I teach a lot of the questions. I, a lot about the history of the different books that I've taught on, the lost books of the Bible and all, but Austin reads a lot of them. I, I gave him advice. I said, stay in the Bible first, and then if you want to learn more about some of the other books, much of what I've taught, so I try to tell him that those other books that we have that are not in the Bible, I said, they're interesting to learn and all, I said, but you need to focus primarily on Scripture. So I covered a lot of history and questions a lot uh, but it was good because I know a lot of that. I've studied a lot of that. Um, what I want to do real quick, and then I'm going to have Crow and Shrek if they want to talk. You want to sit down, Shrek? Sit down. No, I'm okay, man. Okay. Um, Sunday, I normally teach on uh, the verses that I heard at the Catholic Mass. Today is Monday, but I didn't get a chance to do it yesterday uh, for just different reasons. So I want to. I thought I should have done it. So the Catholic Mass Sunday that I went to at the beautiful Corpus Christi Cathedral, I want to teach that real quick. The readings were from the prophet Amos, which was Amos chapter 8, and the other reading was from Luke 16, and then one from Timothy. I don't know if I'll do the one from Timothy. And I felt guilty yesterday because I went, I helped my son-in-law and then I normally go do the meeting at my daughter's house and share these verses. But when my daughter showed up, I, I kind of, I don't ever force anybody, but I said, well, if you want to do it, we'll do it. And I think she wanted me to do it. But then she felt, oh, maybe dad's a little like in one of his tired states. And then later I thought, oh, I think I should have talked. I'll do it now. Uh, Amos, and then we're going to talk, me and Crow a little bit. Um, the, the chapter that was spoken about was this. Amos is a prophet, and he had a message for God's people. And this was it. It says, those of you that are involved in religion, they were the Jewish people back then, you're just saying, we wish this church day was over. We, we don't like the new moon and the Sabbath because we want to get back to work and make some money. That's what they were saying. They're saying today's sort of like a day where we're not allowed to be out making money and wheeling and dealing. And they were complaining about it. Now those were God's people back in the Old Testament, the Jewish people. And the prophet said to them, you're complaining because your service for God is interfering with your business activity. And not only were they complaining that they couldn't do business, but it actually says they wanted to tip the scales, okay? It says they wanted to kind of cheat even in their business dealings. They said, oh, we just can't wait to get back to work, sort of like today's Sabbath day, but tomorrow, as soon as it's over, we've got a couple of schemes going on or plans going on in their business dealings. And they didn't realize that even though they had the worship of God, that God didn't want them doing that, <laughs> tipping the scales. It's actually talked about a false balance. So the chapter, now that was from the Mass, it basically said those that were involved with God, they, they couldn't have all that like dealings going on, all right? All the little stuff that they were involved in. And Amos rebuked them, and it says not only that, but you're taking advantage of the poor. You actually are looking forward for Sabbath to pass, for the religious holiday to pass. That way you could go back to taking advantage of the poor. And those were the things that God rebuked them for. Okay, that was the reading. Then they read from Luke 16. Now this is an interesting story because Jesus tells it. I don't know if Crow ever heard this story. Jesus tells a parable. Sometimes it's referred to as the parable of the unjust steward. So you could almost say it's a parable of a criminal, you know, unjust steward. This is the parable. There was a certain guy that had people working for him. Okay. And the guy that was in charge of the books, the steward, the other people that worked for the boss, 
reported to the boss and basically said, do you know that guy is ripping you off? He's taken some of the money that we're supposed to be getting and he's keeping it for himself. And he's telling you, boss, oh, I only made a hundred on that deal. Now look, th these are not supposed to be too, <laughs> if they fit too many of my friends, it has nothing to do with that. This is a parable Jesus is telling. Well, the boss hears that, wait a minute, I got one of my guys working for me, the steward, and I heard that he's kind of lying about how much money he made. And then the boss calls him in and says, look, we got to have a sit down. Okay, this is in the Bible, Luke 16. And so the steward comes in, the guy comes in, and he's talking to the boss, the man running the show. And the boss says, look, the other guys have told me that you were ripping me off. Is this true? Now, the man immediately realizes he's busted, that he got caught. And it says, Jesus is telling this story, okay? This is a parable. So it didn't actually happen, but it's interesting that he would make a story like this for one of the parables. So the guy that got caught robbing some money, basically, cooking the books, he immediately goes out and he finds a few other people that still owe money to the boss. And he says, come here, how much do you owe the boss? The guy says, a hundred dollars or whatever. He says, quick, sit down, let's change it that you only owe him 50. Because I'm the one in charge, the boss does not know how much you guys really owe. And I'll just tell the boss, oh, he only owes half, he only owes this. So Jesus says that man went around and did that to all of the uh, debtors that owed the boss. Well. The boss finds out about it, and what does he do? He commends him. He says, you know, you did smart. You did good. It says uh, you knew, it, at least you knew how to handle the situation. And a lot of Christian teachers and scholars, and this was read in the Mass Sunday, a lot of them have a difficulty. What exact, what, I'll quote a few verses Jesus says in this, in this parable. He says, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon, which is money, so that when you fail, they can receive you into everlasting habitations. Look, that's what he was saying was this. Have some friends. You know, I have a lot of friends in the street. The other day I was with nobody that's here today, actually, but some friends I've seen. And just, just out of friendship, they gave some money to some of the other friends of mine. Now, I give dollars away. I'll give, bro, I'm going to give you a dollar right now because I gave one to JW and I'm going to do it now. Not just because the camera's on, I've been doing it. I don't do it for the purpose of um, trying to have connections. I do, you're welcome. I do it because I felt uh, I needed to just help some of the guys every now and then. But what Jesus said that that steward did that was wise is he realized he was in hot water with the boss. And in order to have a backup plan, he said, I'm just going to get in good with all the other people that owe the boss money. And Jesus said, the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. So he was commended. Now, at the end of the story, it also says you cannot serve God in mammon. That's one of where we get that. You cannot serve God in money. But he also taught in that story, if you are unfaithful with what is somebody else's, who will give you with what is your own? Okay? If we are unfaithful in the little things, kind of cheating, cutting the corners on the small things, then we're going to be unfaithful in the big things. Jesus said, if we can't, stewardship basically means, for instance, the little dollar. I felt the, uh, last month, I felt God said, Take 35 $1 bills out every month when you get your little paycheck. I felt God said that. And if I didn't do it, would I have been judged? No, but I felt he was saying it. I want to be faithful in that. So I started taking out in the beginning of the month when I get paid 35 $1 bills. I stick them in an envelope there at the house. A few I'll put in the offerings when I go to different churches. And then I'll give some away. But I had to be faithful because it was something simple to do. And in the story, Jesus is saying, look, if you're not faithful with the little stuff, helping one, one another out. I just was telling you, one of my friends, he gave an extra 20 to somebody. 
had nothing to do with any deal. It, on the street, people know you want to have friends sometimes. And, and we in the kingdom, children of God, if we're not helping each other out in even small ways, how are they going to have connections? How are they? We're, doing, we're on video. You want to say something, brother? I'm doing Okay, I'm doing one of the videos. Some, it's facing me. Some people don't like to be on video. So that was the two chapters, and I felt bad I didn't teach them. So the principle was the prophet Amos said, look, you're abusing the poor. You're taking advantage of them. And he, and he was rebuking the rich people, not the people that are on the bottom of the ladder, but those that were on the top. And then the verse that I just taught, the parable of the unjust steward, uh, Jesus is telling us at the end, be faithful in those little things. If you're faithful in those little things, then God will commit to you other things. And in Proverbs, it came to my mind, it says, if you have somebody working for you, it says, and he's unfaithful, meaning he doesn't do the deal when he's supposed to, he doesn't show up when he's supposed to, it says it, it, it's no good. It's like having a broken foot or a tooth that's not working because it's when the job needs to be done. And God, he calls us to serve. And so sometimes he says, I want you to go do this. I'm sending you to do this. It's very important for us to hear God and listen. So those are the themes. Crow, you want to share about your pos uh, share about the little... I told the guys a few uh, months back, I said, whoever wants to get one of the little tattoos, which is Corpus Christi Outreach Ministries, I said, if you all want to get them, you can get them. And it identifies you being in the Christian community or a little movement. And my friend Mike is the one who gave it to me. Pro was going to get one, he just told me today. But Mike said, check with John. I said, yes, anybody that wants to identify with the Christian doesn't have to necessarily be this. But the reason I actually started the idea was because my friend Austin, who's here today, he's inside eating. I said, we can identify as Christians, okay? I've got friends that regret some of their other tattoos. They want to get rid of them all, which is probably too hard to get rid of. I said, just identify with something different if you feel like that. So, uh, Crow mentioned to me that I said, yeah, if you want to get one, you're welcome to get one. Now, Crow, what do you want to share? Anything special? Well, Anything that's um, been going on? Honestly, I've never heard that preaching, and uh, that goes a long ways with what I was saying earlier about uh, needing a Bible to read. Um, that says it all. But I can honestly look back just in the last week. Um, I've had some new friends recently whose uh, life revolves around alcohol, and um, mine does not. I haven't drank in 11 years and until recently. And... Um, these people to get their alcohol go out and, and panhandle which is their business but uh, they're upset that I w didn't that I wouldn't do that yeah. and uh, the day it came for me to go and do it and I'm standing there thinking about it and I don't panhandle to begin with and I'm not going to start now for alcohol I I just sat there and said no no I mean why do I want to do this and what I did a good friend of mine drove up and uh and I went into the restroom and I come back out and he was sitting in his truck waiting for me when he come when I come out, he says, How are you doing? I said, Well, I can use a cigarette or something. And he hands me five or six cigarettes and and uh, he says, Anything else? I said, Well, give me something to eat. I could use like forty cents for some soup and uh, and uh, he sits there and goes to his wallet and hands me a twenty. And and he says, you know, eat up, you know, and and he left. He's a good friend and uh, and that kind of falls in line with what you were saying because uh, I had already made my mind up, so even though I had plenty of money left over to buy the alcohol to make everyone happy, I had decided not to do it, and uh, just because all of a sudden I had money, it told me, you know, I'm sitting there going through that phase, debating it in my head, and it's just like, no, um, I wanted to be uh, true to myself and true to, true to what I, I said, because uh, when I'm sitting there thinking and talking like that in my head, I'm saying, talking to God, and so... You know, when I'm telling him, no, I'm not going to tell him myself or him, however you look at it, that I'm not going to do that. Well, then I'm not going to change my mind that I didn't do that. And now I, apparently I have lost those friends because of that. <laughs> and I'm sad over that. But then when I think back on it, you know, I mean, what did you really lose? If that's what, that's, if that's really all the world is around, revolved around, it's uh, uh, something that, uh, you know, it, needs to come to an end and uh, yeah. and if it's not something I can bring it into 
so to speak, then it's something that, that they will and have and did. And uh, I kind of find myself in a, a dilemma about, uh, like I said, roads to travel and such. And um, I admire very much uh, uh, Apostle Allen. Yes. And uh, we were just talking, me and Allen. <laughs> Look, I was talking for a few hours before. Yes, and uh, he'll be the first to tell you he, he walks with God, and yeah. and, uh, and uh, so that's kind of a uh, uh, a uh, I mean, viewing the, the way he views it is totally different than than the way I viewed it, and. And yet, it, it's similar. Uh, I need, I feel, to talk to him more to find out if that's possible for me or if that's an option. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that entails exactly. And, but I think he, he'd be one of the ones, to, yeah. if not you, to yeah. explain it to me. So uh, um, I, I'm glad you chose today and not yesterday to to teach that because uh, yes, maybe you know, it was intended for you, Crow. Uh, it's uh, it's very hard <coughs> to uh, interpret what things are are intended for you, or yeah. because everybody hears everything, no matter what it is, and you always kind of see how does that relate to me, and maybe it does relate to you, and maybe it doesn't, and uh, it's very hard to distinguish. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, one of the scarier things for me is that I do know that if you ask God to show you the way to something. Uh, be careful what you ask because uh, the answer he gives and he will give it very clearly may not be what you want may not be what you were thinking it may not be anything that you had in mind but um, it's very he'll make it very clear and then at that point on I mean you really have no I mean it's more than a, you have a responsibility to I feel if he's making it clear to you anything that uh, you have responsibility you know Knowledge is responsibility, basically, and that's that's a tough thing to live up to. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's. Uh, that's another uh, verse, Crow. Uh, Jesus, I'll quote Jesus. He said, "To whom much is given, much is required. To whom little is given, little is required." And so, you know, even on the street, people that are younger, they don't have as much. Uh, they get, maybe people let things pass, but look, if people have been around for years, they do something they knew they were not supposed to do, they pay a higher price. But in the kingdom, uh, yeah, knowledge is responsibility. Crow was asking me uh, just today, I was surprised because, not surprised, but Austin, uh, I had a good talk with him and I'm trying to help him stay on track. But Crow's talking about how do I maybe do what you do, John or Alan? Uh, like, how do I do ministry if that's the calling? And I told Crow, I said, oh, Crow, I said, you guys know, you watch the videos. I said, look, I tell people on the videos, when we're not always together doing them, I said, oh, Crow had a lot of insight when he shared on the, the uh, deity of Christ. The time I, I looked at the video later when I uploaded it, and I was sharing, I told Crow, I share with you guys that Crow has uh, a lot of wisdom and you could see that he's more careful with some of the other guys maybe are not as careful in the things that they're speaking or whatever, which is okay. I want you to see everything. But I felt today Crow's is saying he feels seriously that might be the path for him to be on. And I'm also trying to share with him that much of what we do now, he's seeing and he's learning. And that's a big part of it, that when the guys talk and share. I feel God has a calling for this area where I've been for many years, which is Flower Bluff. And I feel God's going to raise up guys like Crow, Austin, and others. If they can walk the path that God gives for them, the direction he gives them, they can have an influence. Uh, they could be, you know, homegrown people that I still don't consider myself a Texan. And I've been in, I only was, I grew up in New Jersey, left when I was 18. I still don't consider myself a Texan. I don't even, even, as long as I've been here, I just don't, I feel like, not that they make me feel like I'm a Yankee. I feel like I'm not, but maybe that's a sense of a calling uh, that we're never, there's a verse that says, here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And that Peter, that was Hebrews. Peter says, we are strangers and pilgrims here on the earth. 
So sometimes I think wherever we're at, God's our only source. You know, we have to, Jimmy D quotes us a lot. Uh, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91. So we're the only place, our homes, look, who was asking me this? A few of the guys were asking me this just today and the other day. I said, John, do you think it's wrong to want to die? I said, you know, when I read a lot of the verses that Paul the Apostle says, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, but nevertheless, to remain in the body is more needful for you. I said, look, today you would say those are suicidal statements, but those are in the Bible. I said, I think when we come to the end of our mission, there comes a sense of maybe uh, we've fulfilled it. But the thing, t today's discussion with Crow would be, we want to make sure we fulfill it. But whatever God's got for us, we want to make sure we do that before we leave. The thing that uh, gets me also is it says that uh, no prophet, or, and it applied to Jesus too, was no prophet uh, uh, has any uh, respect in his own uh, uh, country. Yes, and uh, as a result, they spend most of the time traveling and, and doing that. And I could see why. I mean, you know, when you, you try and do that where you grew up, everyone looks at you and says, well, I know this guy, he did that, or he did this, yes. or he's one of them, or whatever. And so, Hi guys. I think that's where, I gotta, go I gotta go. I mean, that's where I got, I see, see yeah. these things. Yeah. Okay. I was hoping that Austin would come out, but uh, I think he's still in there eating. Uh -huh. And uh, what I want to do, though, I'm going to pray for... Uh, I could have shared a lot. I'm glad I got to share those scriptures. The direction I would give to all of the guys is, and I gave this to Austin, I'm going to try and get you a Bible crow. I don't have any more giveaway ones, but what I'm going to do, could you read small print though? I don't know if you could. Austin had a little one that he just had out, and he's got a bunch of Bibles. I'm going to see if he'll let you have that little Gideon's Bible when he comes back out. I do believe crow and Austin are I believe God's calling you guys to actually learn, because Crow wants to start reading more of the Bible. I said, yes, that was the advice I gave Austin. You begin, you just read scripture. And much of what you see me doing, Crow, when I'm with the guys, sharing, interacting, sometimes baptizing them, it's, it's fairly simple. Jesus' main instructions to his disciples were, at the end of the Gospels, it says, go into all the world and preach to them the good news that I've told you. Cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, baptize them. It was a simple formula of the gospel, meaning we tell people that God loved them, He died for them. That's a very simple thing. And then as we learn and grow, God begins using us. But that's simple, that's simple. And uh, I think God's gonna use all of you guys today so it was good uh, that we had a nice little talk and maybe the scripture that parable Jesus was saying he wants us to be faithful in all the stuff that's going on around us and then God's going to really show us you know the important stuff if we're messing up in the little areas God's merciful but then we're not going to get to the next step so uh, that's all I want to add you're going to take off huh? you taking off or you're hanging uh, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to go talk to Claire, but uh, okay. wait for, uh, watching. I'll be watching for, um, for, uh, for Austin to come out. Okay, yes, if he came out before I shut it off, I would have had him on, but he's in there. Yeah, Let me pray at the end, Crow, okay. and then we'll be done. Father, I thank you for letting me uh, finally share the verses. I felt like I was supposed to talk about them yesterday, and so I feel better that we discussed them. And I just pray you bless Crow, uh, Austin, the guys I was with, Frankie and the others. And use everybody, Lord. Use all of them. There are many gifts, prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And I ask for you to release the gifts in all the guys, that the Holy Spirit will be on them. I ask it in Jesus' name.